And sir, let me ask you, first of all, tell us about the two cases that you guys, you guys only have two cases and they both occurred yesterday morning, correct? That's correct. Uh, tell us about each of them. Well, approximately 4.30 on Sunday morning, officers responded to a 4.35 o'clock on uh, Sunday morning, responded to a possible home invasion in progress on Madison. Uh, while en route, uh, they, they set up a perimeter and other cars responded. Uh, we had uh, great coordination and assistance from uh, Gross Point Park, Gross Point Woods, and Gross Point City. They all sent cars down there. We set up a, a quadrant, a search perimeter, and maintained those positions while other, uh, other officers went through the yards. Uh, it was an exhaustive uh, search, uh, almost six hours. Uh, officers believed that he was still in the area. Uh, we called in two dogs from Macomb County. Our dog was up north uh, in a SRT SWAT training. Uh, they responded. Uh, they tried to pick up some, some scents, some, tr uh, some tracks. Uh, they weren't able to do that successfully. Uh, we still kept up the perimeter in the search, and after close to six hours, just shy of six hours, uh, my lieutenant that was handling the whole thing, Lieutenant George Bloomfield, uh, cleared the other cars, the other vehicles from the other Gross Point City so they could return. Uh, our officers, wonderful, our officers uh, kept in the immediate area and kept patrolling. We uh, put out a Nixle alert with the information we had and uh, uh, a neighbor on Moran. This is all basically three streets. Lothrop, Madison, and Moran uh, reported uh, she, saw, or he, she saw someone in her yard, confronted him what he was doing there. He said, he was, I'm looking for something, and then took off. Uh, uh, she called us, our responding units, after a short foot chase. This time, we able to apprehend the individual. And that was on what street? That was on Moran. Moran? How did mm -hmm. Lothrop come into play yesterday? Uh, there was a, a, an incident where he entered or attempted to enter a house on Lothrop, and the resident said, what are you doing? And he took off uh, running from there. How inside the house was he? Had he, had he was he trying to he get was in? Not in he, it was an attached sun porch open, but he didn't actually main, main, uh, make entry into the uh, secure part of the house. And that was uh, before or after the Madison? That was the first one. That would have been at uh, 4.30. The other one was about 5, 5, 10 a.m. Okay, and that's on the 400 block of Lothrop? Uh, correct. And then, and then after that situation there, then he runs over to Madison? He runs, correct. He runs one block away. And what does he try to do there? He tried to enter a home through a window. And when, how was the homeowner? The homeowner heard the commotion at the window, and came in, and he immediately started going out uh, the window. Did, did the homeowner give chase? No, the homeowner did not give chase. Thank God. Okay, and then that's when that's she called us. We gave chase. And you, had you guys already been in the area from the Lothrop um, call in, or had she even called in yet? Uh, that had that call had not been received. Okay, did that person eventually call in, or they just? I don't believe so. Okay, so they just, it was somebody suspicious on Lothrop, they didn't call 911, but then the person on Madison, when they were somebody, where they Correct. were Correct, the second to... attempt they called. Okay, and, uh, and then that's when you guys set up the perimeter. And what, was, what do you think this guy was doing for six hours? How was he ducking and diving all this whole time? Well, if you would have seen the amount of scout cars in the area that set up the perimeter, uh, plus the officers on foot going yard to yard, looking in garages, under cars, uh, any place a perpetrator could hide, uh, you would stay down too. You, you were not going to get out with that uh, kind of police presence. Again, it was a well-coordinated uh, effort uh, with the assistance of Gross Point Park, City, and Gross Point Woods, and I commend them for that. It was an outstanding uh, way it was handled. Chief, I did see that uh, when I was driving to work Sunday morning. I mean, it was on lockdown. I mean, can you just, again, reiterate how impressive that effort was? Well, we have a mutual aid pact with all the points in Harper Woods. Uh, when one of those individual departments calls for assistance, uh, they get the cavalry, and they, they get whatever they need, whether it's a police or fire. And uh, we're pretty good at, at supplying that need and setting up the necessary coordinates, perimeters, uh, tracking, whatever it may be. So now I know you can't say specifics, but now you, you do have a suspect in custody. Now the work begins, or how does this kind of go from here? That's correct. We have a uh, suspect in custody. And we're working with the other uh, Gross Point departments to try to piece this puzzle together to see if uh, uh, he's responsible for any of the crimes that have been committed in their neighborhood. I, I, I believe, I know we have the suspect, I'm pretty sure we have the suspect, I know we have the suspect from our case. Uh, as the other cases, we're still pus putting that together. Uh, there is no other suspect at this time that we're looking for. It's important that the residents know there is no other suspect 
that we are aware of, that we're looking for. Uh, we believe we have the suspect. Now we just got to put it together. When you say the suspect, you're talking about in? In our case. In I'm not case. sure of the other cases yet. Uh, the detective bureaus uh, are working together uh, in conjunction with the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office and are going to be putting everything together that they have and attempting to secure a warrant. And in, in your two cases, um, and that's what we're speaking of, your two cases, correct? Correct. Uh, were, there, were there women in the house and were they alone? Or t give us, do you think he was? Had been well, I can only address the one that I know. The second one that called was a woman that spotted him uh, in the window. And he was, he was coming in? He was coming in. What do you think his intent was, given what we know about this, uh, the possible suspects in the other two cases? What do we think was the intent on? Um, I have no idea yet. We're, we're, we're attempting to interview the sub subject now. Uh, I, I can't tell you what his intents were, what his intentions were, I'm sorry. What can you tell us about him? Any um, uh, age, um, background, prior convictions, arrests? Uh, he has an outstanding warrant out of Wayne County, I know that. I'm not quite sure what it's for. There's a little confusion on that. Uh, but other than that, I'm not even sure how old he is yet. Um, he's not a youngster, let's put it that way. Oh, this had to be an, an unnerving last couple of weeks for the residents of the, of the Gross Points. Oh, without a doubt. Th this is not commonplace in any of the Gross Points. Uh, it demands the highest attention. Our residents expect it, and they're going to get it. And uh, we're, we're really good at working together, uh, all the points together. This was another outstanding example of it. Uh, we've had several fires lately we've worked on uh, together. It just works really, really well. And uh, I can't thank them enough for supplying the aid, because without that mutual aid, without all the officers responding from their respective departments, we wouldn't have been able to set up that, qu that quadrant that fast. He would, uh, he would have been gone. A lot of times it's tough to get those corners secured while a guy's on the dead run. Um, th that, that just happened to be done very, very well. Is he talking? He's not talking yet that I'm aware of. Um, okay. Um, and talk about the actual arrest of him. Uh, was, it, was it during a foot pursuit that, that he was arrested, or did he try hiding out in some corner or what? Uh, he, he was up and running and the guys chased him into the backyard on Moran, 400 block of Moran. How critical was it that the resident on Moran called after seeing this, this, uh, this suspect in her backyard? Uh, within oh, five minutes. That was the second time. First time was almost six hours. Yeah. All right, anything we didn't ask you that you can offer up? What? No, uh, that just the residents need to keep their home secure, locked, and the, uh, their vehicles locked. We've had the larcenies. And to call us when they see anything out of the ordinary, not just suspicious, anything out of the ordinary, we'll be glad to check it out for them. Talk about a firearm. We heard that there was a firearm recovered also? Uh, there was. Uh, uh, we're not sure about the firearm yet, but there, there was a firearm recovered. On him or, or in the ground? Or? Uh, uh, in a yard. Okay. So we're not sure that's related yet. suspect I mean it, does he match the description of the, the description the descriptions are similar okay. the clothing is similar okay. how did you eventually trace him back if she didn't call number one to the local location she just saw the police presence or yes um, we, we knew those were the those were the, those were three of the five streets that basically we had cordoned off that we did the uh, uh, perimeter on so it, it just through uh, officers finding um, uh, any kind of evidence that I'm not going to go into that they located along the way uh, brought it back. They, they did reverse tracking with the dog. Uh, they went door to door and spoke to the neighbors. Uh, just all, all that compiled together is what we're working on presenting now. And what was the block of Madison? All 400 blocks. 400. Mm -hmm. So it's 400 block of Moran as well? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Okay.